Hello my dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon and today we have another spoiler free book review to share with you guys and today we are talking about The Silence in Her Eyes by Armando Lucas Coria. So The Silence in Her Eyes. First of all that's a very beautiful book cover. Um, second of all, this book, I started it this morning. I had no intention of reading it all today, but it is a little on the shorter side, clocking it at around 200 pages, and it just, it grabbed me right away. So, we're going to talk about it. I think this video is probably going to be pretty short because, like many books, it's hard to say too much about it without saying too much about it if you get what I'm saying but we'll do our best and um, then you can mark your calendars if it sounds like something that you are interested in hang on let me see when it comes out um, 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 um. this book I think it's January this book comes out yeah January 16th so once we're done here, if this sounds like something you're interested in, mark your calendars. Thank you to NetGalley and Simon & Schuster Canada for letting me read this book early. And let's get into it. So <laughs> this book is about a woman named Leah. She's 28 years old and she's got a very specific kind of vision impairment. She has what's known uh, most commonly as um, motion blindness. And so if you're standing very still and she's looking at you, she can see you. But the minute you start to move your arms when you're talking or walk away, um, it, things get very weird for her vision wise. It's like, I think the brain and the eye can process 24 frames per second but with her she just she can't and so say if she sees someone walking or a dog running she'll see it in like bursts like every time she blinks she'll see it and it doesn't quite look right like maybe she'll catch a blur and so it's like someone's head but their body's gone because they've already moved it sounds terrifying honestly and um anyway if she wasn't born this way she had a fall when she was eight years old that resulted in this neurological condition and for a good part of the book, we don't know about the events that led up to this happening to her. So when we meet her, like I said, she's 28. Her mom has just died. And that's a big adjustment for Leah because, of course, with a condition like this, she's really relied on her mom to help her. And they also have like a housekeeper that comes in to clean the house. And Leah's very close with her as well. Her name's Antonia. And they have a very close relationship. So when Leah's mom dies, it's kind of Leah and Antonia sort of dealing with everything. Leah sees a psychiatrist once a week, or she's supposed to be seeing him once a week at least. And she's just trying to live her life. We also know that Leah lives in a fairly like old pre-war building in Manhattan and that after her mom died she inherited the apartment plus a bunch of money so like she's pretty well set in terms of um, not having to worry about her financial situation. She's also got some friends in the building, some older ladies, one is 90, one is slightly younger and she has dinner with them every week and they've really become her chosen family. So as we meet Leah she's um just on the precipice of getting involved with a new neighbor that has moved into the apartment next to hers and quickly we see that the things are not okay with this neighbor like 
Her name's Alice. She's this beautiful woman. And the problem is, like, she's being stalked and harassed by her husband, who she's trying to get a divorce from. And it just it becomes a whole thing. And Leah gets swept up into the whole situation, and there's something inside of her that makes her want to save this woman. And, um, you know, at night, because, because her vision is impaired, all of her other senses are very heightened, especially her sense of hearing. And so with Alice living next door, there are many nights when um, Leah can tell that the estranged husband has come to Alice's apartment and she can hear Alice in distress and it sounds like she's being maybe beaten and just really put through the ringer. So Al, uh, Leah really gets it in her mind that she needs to protect this woman. And that's kind of the basic gist of the story. This is honestly one of the strangest in the best possible way books that I've read in a long time. It kept me guessing until the very end. I had theories. I had theories. Um, and I was like, oh, this is what's going to happen, and I'm ready for it. But, um, I, I didn't quite call it. It, it was different than I thought it was going to be, in a good way. And, um, <laughs> yeah. It's definitely a psychological thriller. And, like, there were times when I could feel my heart pounding because I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> what is going on here? Because as we go through the book, we meet other acquaintances of Leah's because she, like I said she tries to keep her life as normal as possible but it's difficult of course um, but once her mom is gone she really wants to get out there and she goes to a bookstore all the time and she's got an acquaintance there named Mark and she gets food delivered to her house by the same delivery boy and she really tries to sort of form a connection with him because she's 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 starving for connections and friendships. And, um, yeah. She's a very interesting woman, Arlia. So, if this sounds at all interesting to you, like I said, mark your calendar. Because I think you would enjoy it. Like I said, it kept me on the edge of my seat. I kept waiting to see what was going to happen, what we were going to learn. And where it was going to go. And it went in a completely different direction than I thought it would. Um, in a good way. You know, in a good way. In the kind of way that made me happy that it didn't go the way I was hoping. So I think this is going to get a four, maybe four and a half stars for me. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. So again, thank you to Simon & Schuster. I always appreciate when they... Um, let me read their books early. <laughs> There's always so many good ones. And this, from what I can tell, the author is a Cuban author, and this has been translated. Um, so I think that's really great. I always love reading from different voices, not just, you know, your regular, all the time, same English authors. It's always fun to explore more variety. <laughs> Anyway, I'm definitely going to go back and check out other books from this author because I really, really liked the way that he spun this story. I liked the writing. Um, it lent, I think, a little more towards, like, it's obviously a psychological thriller, but to me the writing leaned a little more towards literary fiction, uh, which I loved. It was literary fiction, but it still kept that pace up that you expect from a thriller. So, yeah. Very talented writer. So glad I read it. And uh, I hope you do too. So if you do, let me know in the comments what you thought of it. And I will see you guys again real soon. I can't wait for December to come. I've got so many exciting videos planned. Very festive. Very Christmassy. There's going to be a mix between like straight sit down bookish content but also Christmas vlogs, and I think we're just going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> anyway, guys, take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye!